Hello everyone, Dr. Tam here, your pain specialist and chiropractor here in Vacaville, California. Today I want to talk to you about what type of calories do you actually need? You know, there's three different macros when people talk about foods, right? There are your fats, your proteins, and carbs. So the big question is how many calories do you need? What is the amount of carbohydrates, proteins, and also fats do you actually need? Well, when you calculate your body, if you are shooting for a good, healthy body with, you know, hormones aside and, you know, overweight, or I'm not trying to talk about someone who's trying to lose weight right now. It's someone who's trying to stay healthy and maintain a good weight. What should you be doing? And then afterwards, I'll tell you how to kind of modify what you need to do to really achieve a good, healthy body. Maybe you're trying to lose weight. Maybe you're trying to do something else. Well, it depends on what you need because of activity level is different. Your workouts are going to be different. Do you walk? Do you not? Do you exercise? Do you have a desk job? I mean, all of that play a role in how you tailor specific needs to your body. In general, the amount of protein that you need is roughly about one gram per body weight pound. Okay, roughly about one gram for per pound. Now, this is for someone who is trying to exercise, stay healthy. Okay, general exercise, stay healthy, about one gram per pound. The amount of fats that you absolutely need is roughly about point three grams per pound all right so when you calculate everything how do you know how much calories do you need well first you have to know how many calories is it per gram of protein all right so per gram of protein there is roughly four calories or for other people in the other parts of the world is four kcals that's the scientific term for it K cal. So we call it calories. So there's four calories per gram of protein. There is nine calories per gram of fat. So for example, let's just say someone weighs 200 pounds, right? So you're trying to stay healthy. This person is exercising already. You're trying to maintain their body weight, their muscle mass and everything. So healthy wise, okay, this is general they need about 200 grams of protein, all right? About 200 grams of protein. When you look at 200 grams of protein, times that by four, what is that? That is 800 calories, right? For those of you who want to look at calories, it's not so much the calories in or calories out, it's more so what type of macros you're actually putting into your body. Then you also have to look at the amount of fat that you're putting in. So someone who's 200 pounds, they need about 66, 67. It's actually 66.67. But you can do the math and uh, let's just call it 67, right? 67 grams of fat, you times that by about nine. You're roughly, let's just round it up to 70 you're roughly getting about 630 calories, right? So 800 and then another 630, you're looking at 1430 right now. Then your other macro is going to be, whether it's carbohydrates, right? You gotta fill it in. If you need about 2000 or 2500 calories, if you think that's what you need, and you gotta go based off of how you how you feel as well, because it's how well you can function. I realize that there are times when I have eaten too little, say if I did one meal per day, but I try to just go right away and, and just, you know, go from three, three meals a day or two meals a day. And then all of a sudden, boom, shock my body to one meal a day. Well, you might not function sometimes as well physically, sometimes mentally, you might get a little bit fatigued if you don't have the right amount of macros that your body needs. Yes, most people, it, science says carbohydrates 
is not something that is essential because your body has a mechanism called gluconeogenesis where you can actually make glucose. It breaks down the glycogen in your liver, in your muscles, and now you can actually make glucose. But it depletes the glycogen stores in your body so that if you are exercising or working out, let's just say uh, someone who likes to play uh, basketball or tennis or swimming, when your body doesn't have enough carbohydrates, and this is what I want to share with you because how do you tailor this, right? How do you tailor this to you? If you feel that your workouts are, you feel fatigue, you're not getting enough um, umph, if you will, then maybe it's time to add in a little bit of carbohydrates and just kind of go up that way before you, the day before your workout and see how your body feels the next day. Because you have to have enough glycogen and sugar and carb stores in your muscle in order for you to have that uh, umph and explosiveness during your workouts. So that's something to really pay attention to. The other thing you want to pay attention to is are you hydrated, right? So are you hydrated well enough during that time as well? That can play a role. Now, why are fats really important? You know, for the longest time, people have been telling, you know, specialists has been saying, oh, stay away from fats, stay away from fats. That's many years ago. What they have found out now is that your hormones are, you know, very fatty. Okay, you need fat to run on hormones, to run the hormones. You need fat to run your brain. You need good fats. Now, this, we're talking about good fats here, right? We need fats to run our skin, our hair follicles, our nails. You need good, healthy fats to run all of that. Okay. Now, why do you need protein? Well, you have essential amino acids. That's the building block of your whole body. And these three between protein, carbohydrates, and also fat, these are called your macros, right? So when you call, there's macronutrients, there's micronutrients, these are your macros. So you want to really pay attention to what type of macros that you're eating, how your body is functioning, how your body is feeling, right? If you don't have enough fats, or if you, know, you have too little fats, your joints, won't wear as well because the lubrication in your joints is very fatty as well okay so when you look at the body as a whole you need you you really need a good source of protein a really good source of fat the carbohydrates can be tailored up or down depending on what you do people who are really high intensity let's say someone goes out and biking but they're biking on flat roads well, they don't need as much carbs as someone who's going to be biking on hills, right? Because you need to power up that hill. So therefore, you need to up carbs a little bit, at least the day before, to make sure you have enough glycogen and glucose in your body to really power you up that way. Uh, for me, for, to give you an example, the days that I'm going to work out quite intensely, I will intake a little bit more carbs the day before, right? About you know, 30 to 60 grams extra carbs uh, the day before just to make sure I have enough carbohydrates for my more intense workouts the next day. I've done it both ways. I'm not telling you this just because I'm you know, reading literature. That's one. But also I'm telling you this based off of my experience is on the days that I know I'm going to work very intensely, the day before, if I am not eating correctly or the right way, my performance will go down. I know that for a fact. I've tested it many times and now I'm here to share it with you, right? But there's a lot of people out there that um, will claim to be specialists and tell you to eat one way, eat another way. Now, usually they're, sometimes those are goal oriented. Are you trying to lose weight, right? Most people, when they talk about nutrition, when they eat a certain way, they call it a diet. We refer to a diet as something that, oh, someone's so-and-so is on a diet. That means they want to lose weight. Well, a diet is just a way that you're eating. But you want to eat not just for a specific diet because not everyone's diet is necessarily the same. Right now, depending on what kind of conditions you have, let's say if you're really inflamed, you want to have an anti-inflammatory food management or anti-inflammatory diet. 
that is for a specific reason. But once you start clearing out the inflammation, now you have to tailor it to how your body process the macros and what your activity level and what you need. I just want to bring that awareness to people because some people, you know, some of our patients, they tell me, they say, well, Dr. Tam, I go for my workout. Boy, I just feel really tired. And I will always ask them, I said, you know, the last couple of days, what did you eat? Right? How, how, did, how were you eating? Oh, I ate this and I ate that. Now, a lot of times given, most people eat a lot of junk. Okay. There, there's not very healthy. The first thing you got to do is you got to cut that out. We're talking about just healthy foods. You got to cut all the, all the junk out, all the garbage out first, and then you tailor the proteins. We're talking about healthy proteins, right? We're talking about healthy fats and then also complex carbohydrates, not just simple sugars, right? So those are, I mean, each of those are going to be, that's a whole nother video in itself. I could probably talk for hours just talking about nutrition all in all. But I want to bring that awareness to you. How you feel ultimately can be due to the nutritional intake and the amount of macronutrients that you need to be tailored specifically for you, right? You cannot have a mom or dad who's working a nine to five desk job eat the same way a professional athlete eat. You will develop some sort of uh, overweight diabetes and obesity because they perform at a different level, right? So you have to look at how your lifestyle is, tailor your foods to what you do. All right. Until next time, I hope this finds you well. Subscribe, click the link below. I'll see you next time.